Hello, Internet, and welcome to episode 28 of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. David and I decided to band together just us two and wear matching outfits, oddly enough, made of stripes. So what we're going to do is go with our silly news format. And after that, we're going to play a bit of games. So I hope you're ready for it. This is Silly News with David and Robert. Did you say play a bit of game? Did I say game or games? Well, you said, I I heard you say play a better game. <laughs> but a game? Just... <laughs> it's but a game. The world there's of this, the internet. You know, there's such a fine line between like teasing and just like also noticing little like flubs that you make oh, yeah. <laughs> when you talk on the podcast. And I never want you to feel like I'm teasing you. Oh, God, but no. like whenever I catch them in the edit, I'm like, oh. I don't know what that word was. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I try do, to say uh, them my, when I hear them live. <laughs> I feel like I'm one of those people where my brain works faster than my mouth. And totally. so I combine words sometimes together. In addition to the fact that I love a portmanteau. So I'll combine words just on my <laughs> yeah. own time. But I'm, I'm not surprised if you catch that a lot. And, and yeah, don't Catch worry. what? <laughs> catch that a lot. Catch that no! a lot. Got it. <laughs> Is it already happening? <laughs> That's all good. David, Yeah. introduce yourself. Tell us about it's, how you are. It's David. I am good. I am. Sometimes I think about this quote from Jim Carrey uh, in Liar Liar, the seminal 1997 film directed by Tom Shadiak. We're all familiar. Uh, of course. And there's a, there's a moment where he goes, uh, the judge asks him, like, you know, Mr. Reed, how are you? Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he like leans in real close to the mic and he goes, I'm a little upset by a bad sexual episode I had last night. But other than that, I think I'm okay, Your Honor. <laughs> and the judge goes, all right, well, you're young. It'll happen more and more as you get older. <laughs> and, and it's just like such a weird moment. Uh, but I think about it a lot. So I'm a little upset by a sexual episode I had last night. Um, but otherwise, I'm good. Aren't we all? <laughs> Sometimes it's like you get it and you're always like, was it worth it? Because it was just so much awkwardness and, 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 and uh, upsetting moments. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I was telling Robert off mic. It was just like, you know, I uh, told somebody they were cute. They said I was cute. I said I asked if they wanted to hang out. Silence. Just nothing. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus. OK. All right. I mean, I get it. Like validation is nice, but damn. Yeah. Just the silence, the silence. The internet is Don't full like of it. ghosts and trolls, everybody. And if you're one of those <laughs> yeah. app users, at a minimum, say not interested. It's better than just disappearing. Most people are okay with it. Yeah, most people totally get it. Yeah, oh God, have you ever been stood up on a date? Uh, very late, but not stood up yet. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Same. No, no one's not shown, just been very late or canceled very last minute. So I haven't just like full yeah. on been like, got to the venue and been ghosted on that. Yeah, make that me would. Yeah, I would need to like reach out to a friend if that happened of like, you know, the silence and being uh, stood up on the date. That's just like. Ugh, yeah. ugh, oh, just gives actually, you I lie. I technically had one scenario where um, when I got out here who I had met a guy who was like the next town over and the next town over means very different thing in England because it was just like a 15 minute ride on the train. And we had set up to meet the next day. We set a time. I told him that like the train is going to come in on. I bought the ticket for it. I told him I bought the ticket. And then that next day, I messaged him like, so are we still on? Nothing. Disappeared. Blocked me. Everything. And I was just like, you are such a oh, dick. Oh, not the blocking. What a dick. Because like that was an oh. investment of money and time. And Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But I still not had to his mention phone number. Emotion. He, yeah. Uh. Because I still yeah. had the record of his message through WhatsApp and he blocked me right. on there, but I had the phone number. So I sent him a text just saying like, that was extremely rude. You know, you could, the least you could have said is said you weren't interested and never replied. So yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Oi, you know, 
uh, we'll get into the news, but like <laughs> the just uh, this avoidance stuff is so at top of mind for me lately. Right. Because I'm also thinking about so recently in therapy, we talked about boundaries, la la la. And my <laughs> therapist was like, you know, of course, we can set boundaries for other people. Right. We can tell them and we can tell them again what we want, what we don't want. Um, and it's up to them to respect that. Yeah. But like there are boundaries for ourselves of how much do we engage past the point where it's healthy for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, where that. do you set your limits? And I think that's each to to their own. There's a lot yeah. of variety in that world. Yeah, because when you're getting the sense or when I'm getting the sense that someone is being avoidant, I have a choice. I can say, how much do I keep following up with this person before it's just a losing battle? And it's yeah. clearly like I'm uh, causing myself more anxiety by whatever yeah indulging their uncertainty you know yeah i i just basically i get to the point where i feel like if there's so much time between the messages or there is uh so little like engagement to the point where i'm forgetting what i last said like if i go back into that thread and have to catch up on what i said then i'm yeah. like it's pretty much not worth it and then in, in yeah. person i give them two rounds i basically say if on yeah. like within two dates i don't feel like any kind of spark or interest then i just stop it there yeah oh good for you yeah <laughs> sometimes i'll pick up on a lack of interest like just by texting um yeah there was one date i went on uh that was just like so lack of chemistry where i knew right as the date was ending i was like like i just gotta i gotta let them know as soon as possible yeah so to be courteous i think i waited like 30 minutes or like an hour um and to his credit maybe he picked up on the same vibe but it was just like yeah so he was cool with it but i'm like oh I don't know. It just brought a question in my mind of like, is it ever okay while on a date to just be like, well, it was really nice meeting you, but I think this is a one-time thing. I am just going to head out. <laughs> yeah. I, I would see it as like, if it's so uncomfortable that like you both right. are feeling it. It has to be really it. uncomfortable. Yeah. Like that. you're both feeling it. You can both tell that like the conversation is dead. You're not really going anywhere. And you just can feel that chemistry of like, this isn't five and for either of us. I think so then, because then you're torturing yourself as opposed to just being like, you know, just, yeah, you can just say, Hey, this obviously isn't really working. Enjoy your life. Bye. Um, totally. That's when I think you got to do it then. Totally. Yeah. And uh, there, there was a moment, I don't know what, like if you've ever been on a date that bad, but I think in my younger days, there's one day in particular where for some reason, both of us were just indulging the horror of this bad date. Like he almost seemed to like relish in like making fun of me and making me feel awkward and like just like being really standoffish and like pouting and like all this stuff. And I was just like, what is happening? I feel like all I've done is like try to be nice to this guy. <laughs> and yeah. he's just like calling me annoying or like kind of scoffing at when I say something wrong or like not knowing Ouch. stuff. And it was just like, it was nasty. And then years later I saw him at the Richmond night market. Um, and I was like, Oh, Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> like the awful <laughs> day from way, way back. Um, because, uh, and then my friend was there, my friend Shay, we should have her on sometime, by the way, mm. I think she'd be a very fun guest. Uh, she was there and I was like trying to point him out and like not be too obvious. And she said she made eye contact with him. And then she like gave him like a, what do you call? She like sneered at him <laughs> kind of thing of just like, what? <laughs> like, why are we sneer. making eye contact? And I was like, all right, we're not going to talk to him. We're not going to talk to him. Let's walk in this yeah. direction. Um, oh my gosh. The, the just, I've never, I've never oof. had a date that bad that it had to go to the space of shut it down. Uh, but I did have a hookup so bad that I just pretty much ended it as like, Hey, let's, let's just, you shit out. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. This, and, shit and out. Like, he shit out. Me, I think like a couple days later <laughs> and he was just like, Hey, how's it going? And I'm like, I'm just going to tell you, I didn't feel it. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. And moved on. Yeah. And, and like, I won't even get into the details yet, but it was such a drawn out. I was being too polite and I, I let it go for way longer than it should have, but it was just like, bad. so yeah. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I value our friendship and that we oh. affirm for each other that like it's okay to just not be into it and we both really value clarity <laughs> so yeah, yeah exactly. that's really nice yay uh all right well back to those on the internet uh i want to say before we get into the news remember that this is a podcast that both has a video version so if you're interested in watching us please check out bit button on youtube there's a channel there's a playlist with all these episodes in it so you can watch it there or if you just want to do the podcast style we're on all the wonderfully popular formats including apple spotify and google and we're supported by some lovely patreon subscribers with people such as vicky and Elias. so thank you to you and to anyone else who's supporting us but now david you ready for the news I'm so ready for the news. All right. So let's go to the news. These are a collection of articles that are offbeat, dumb, shocking, weird, fun, just stood out. They're lighter. And we've each selected some articles uh, to bring our perspective on them and of the ridiculous qualities of them so that we can expand a bit on the lighter side of the news. David, you want to start us off? (sighs) Ah, yes. This story worth a thousand words is... A Michigan truck hauling bees uh, crashed, (laughs) unleashing a swarm of bees in Boyne City, Michigan. Uh, It overturned along a northern Michigan roadway, unleashing a large swarm of bees, police said. The truck overturned at 2 p.m. on Wednesday in August uh, on a, yeah, right? On an August and Wednesday. So, wait, maybe it was Wednesday the 25th of August. (laughs) It dumped its load of live bee boxes along a Charlevoix County road, prompting police to urge residents, keep your windows and doors closed. There was a very large swarm, the sheriff said. There were upwards of 50 million bees in this truck when it crashed near Boyne City, uh, a community northwest of Detroit. (laughs) Bees. <laughs> I wish Oprah was there just so the meme could become a reality and she would just be shouting bees and there'd be bees flying all around her. Uh, it, that's a lot of bees. That's so scary. 50 million bees. 50 million bees. Hey, have you ever seen... Um, Wow. Wow. This is a deep cut. You probably haven't. This is a YouTube video about like number of hours in one's life illustrated by jelly beans. Mm. And they like start sorting through the jelly beans and sorting through like, okay, how much time are you awake? How much time are you spending at work? How much is your free time? What do you do with your free time? And they illustrate it with jelly beans. And like, I just want to see like 50 million jelly beans to get a better idea of like how many this is. Yeah. So you could like separate out the ones that represent your parts of your life that you're like using in like a productive way, in a lazy way in a unproductive way and you could get mm-hmm. a visual a bean based visual of what your life's all like and how you spend yeah time. that's what that yeah 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 so the video is called the time you have parentheses in jelly beans by z frank um so it they based the video off of a life being 28,835 days um wow that's not even close to 50 million and it looks like so much <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, what, you know what's amazing when I read through this article is the fact that no residents were stung by the bees, but the actual people who came to pick them up, the beekeepers got stung. And I really yeah. want to know more about the driver. A, what what did he have to do like after this occurred? B, how did he feel about it? And C, could he do anything? Like, I'm curious if he yeah. tried like collecting them from the air and putting them in a jar, or if he just started <laughs> running from the scene. Like, yeah, like, this this article needed an interview with that just driver. Turn around! <laughs> Don't drive in that direction. It's like <laughs> they're wait. coming. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, because it says local firefighters sprayed water on the boxes to keep the insects cool in the heat. But like, yeah, just beekeepers arrived to try to move the boxes back. It says several hundred thousand bees never made it back into their boxes. (sighs) And how do they collect them all? That's a curious thing. Like once they're free... How, how do they get them back? Do they sing a song? Do they put out a little thing of honey for them? How do you collect bees? Uh, how to catch a swarm of bees? Oh, dare I? 
dare I? Um, okay, so show me, is it a net? Yeah, it's just a large net. They try to keep things in like these little like see-through bags, it looks like. Um, but yeah, they truly just put the bees in boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there must be a way of attracting them because no way you're grabbing them out of the air. Or go, maybe they're running around back and forth with those like comically large like butterfly nets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Yeah. Really. I feel like there's a lot of materials like this, and bees I never saw as one, but there's a lot of materials that are carted around in trucks that when they are like released, there's nothing like you can do. Like it is just a like write off, and it's a mess. Like I remember yeah. one time it was a truck full of like hagfish and so hagfish have this like thing where they produce extremely large amounts of mucus around their body and so that there was pictures of the highway and it was just slick from like end to end for like i don't know a mile or two of just mucus <laughs> from these hagfish and then the fish everywhere and i was Oof. like Whoa. yeah yeah i feel like paint is like that where if you spill a bucket of paint, it's over for that floor. <laughs> like, There's no what do you do? It. There's like, maybe you can, like, it's not like you can recover it and put it back in the tin because it's going to be so messy and like diluted and, you know, just from t contact with other things. But also like, you got to, you got to wash it off and wash it off fast. Otherwise it's going to set. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, spilling a bucket of paint on wood and then it just like sticks right in there. Yeah, spilling it onto pavement. Yeah, it, it, it really is something. Mm -hmm. um, spills are one of the worst thing ever. Have you ever heard of those yeah. spills that are like, they just spilt down the worst possible part of your home, like behind mm -hmm. the, the stove or the fridge? You yeah. know, like it's just like, especially if it's sticky, it's just like, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oof, red wine. We used to have this, um, this really like, Honestly, horrible material for a countertop. It was just porous enough that it would let like stains in. So if you ever left any liquid on this countertop, it would just like discolor. So we would make like turmeric lattes. We would maybe make a cocktail or some wine or whatever. And all of them had enough color in it where if they got onto the counter, like, and you left it for 30 minutes, not oh even God. like an hour it would leave a spot and you'd just be like, oh, okay, well, that's ruined. <laughs> like, it must just, have just it's been over. like a, a collage of like ring stains <laughs> from various vessels. Yeah, yeah it really was. Bleh. Yeah, because we would put like dirty dishes on the one side and sometimes just like a tiny bit of whatever, soot, scum, stuff <laughs> from the dirty dish would like yeah. get on and then you would just have a ring and it would be uh, just, just so messy. The world so messy. is messy. It was not meant to be contained. No, it was not. Speaking of messy, let's go to article number two. Mm. I'm going to bring to you a article from The Mirror. They actually have a special section specifically on like odd and bizarre news. It's like one of my favorite things. And The uh, Mirror, which is based out here in the UK, um, has this article with the title, Couple Slam for Announcing Their Pregnancy at a Friend's Engagement Dinner. Mm. So, uh, you can only imagine the horror of one woman when she attended a special dinner hosted by her close friend Sarah and her now fiancé. The happy couple announced their engagement to their closest friends, and this was the purpose of the gathering. Everyone was super happy, basking in the excitement of another wedding uh, on the horizon, when Sarah's friend, who will only be known as N, decided to make an announcement of her own. Anne announced that she was expecting a baby with her husband, and suddenly all the attention went on her, and everyone started congratulating her and her husband, the friend explained. Uh, on a Reddit thread called I Am The Asshole, <laughs> just to give you some context on the thread in Reddit, I looked towards Sarah, and she was silent, but looked really upset, so I asked her if she allowed Anne to announce her pregnancy here. Sarah did not, or said no, but not to worry about it. Her fiance looked mad, but didn't say oh, anything shit. either. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sensing Sarah and her partner were not happy, the friend saw red and quickly shouted to get Anne's attention in front of the crowd. The friend told her, you weren't given permission to announce your pregnancy here. Sarah and her fiance gathered everyone here and are paying for our meals. The night is about them, not you. 
If you wanted a pregnancy announcement dinner, you should have held your own for, on your own time, but you wanted to take the attention from Sarah, Sarah and her fiance away so badly that you're ruining their engagement dinner. You're toxic. So these are quotes that I guess were used at this dinner. And yeah, yeah. This might be from the Am I the Asshole yeah, post on Reddit. Exactly. Uh, so this this is like wow wow what how would you react david if you had some big special gathering that was known and somebody else brought their announcement how would you react to that i mean it's absolutely fucked up (laughs) that's such a weird thing to do i yeah i agree with the person saying why did you choose that now like especially if it's like not obvious they're pregnant like it's just like good for you but also there's a time and a place. It's just so, it's just so irritating. Like, yeah. And specifically like, you know, marriage and pregnancy are like life events, right? Mm -hmm. Like your life, uh, ideally, right. Will be changed forever because of your marriage. Your life will be changed forever because of a pregnancy and you know, the upcoming child. Um, so it's just like, how do you not have the empathy for the other person who's also making a big decision? You know, talking Boggles. about the person who just got engaged. Boggles, totally boggles my mind because it's like you literally have nine months to make this announcement. Maybe, okay, maybe the first couple trimesters or so, but you definitely have way more time than that one night to make this announcement instead of pulling it away from somebody else. Yeah. Um, I, I love that somebody else at that party just called her out and called her toxic. So, yeah. I, and, and if she's using words like toxic, there had got to have been a history with this friend to begin with between uh, yeah. Sarah and yeah. her friend. Yeah, I wouldn't be as global as that of saying like, you're toxic versus saying like, that was a toxic thing you did. Yeah. <laughs> but still, um, yeah, the article goes on. Uh, can we keep reading it or can you keep reading it? Yeah, uh, let's see. So it said, Sarah texted me after the dinner and said, thank you, that I didn't have to say what I did, but she was happy. More so once N left because a pregnancy announcement hurt her. The friend continued before asking other Reddit users whether they are they also thought she was in the wrong. I love your shiny spine. You're a true friend and I'm sorry your boyfriend, I, your boyfriend either can't see or can't appreciate that. One Reddit user commented, you, deem, you redeemed the night, you didn't ruin it. So... Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then a couple other added comments to the thread. You're mm-hmm. the hero, Sarah. You're the hero, Sarah, deserved for effort and cost of having a dinner like that. A dinner like that. Boom. Too. That's huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Effort and cost of bringing those people together, especially if this is during COVID. Like, it's stressful enough getting people together. Why would you? Yeah. Why would you hijack it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 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 just so, so odd. But the uh, I, I think I think it seems like the consensus within the thread was saying like you were in the right for telling them that this was just not the right time, and and I don't, I don't know I can't I can't even imagine I mean there's yeah. just yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is the like I'm just trying to think you know uh, just is there any way. It could have gone well, you know, (laughs) the only thing I can think of is maybe like at the very end of the night when everyone's like wrapping up and they like, the you know, the celebration had had happened. The congratulations went around. Things are dying, you know, diving down or whatever, wrapping up for the night. It could be like, hey, you know, just, you know. And off night on another high note, it doesn't all end here. We also have an announcement and we're going to have a party later or something, you know, like yeah. some, a separate occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like, yeah, you're on to something there. So whatever. I'm the pregnant lady. You're the host of this uh, engagement party. Mm. If I go to you privately and just like say something as the night is wrapping up of like, hey, I'm so happy for you guys. This was such an awesome night. Um you know, I like, thanks so much for having us. And like, it's so good to see everyone. Uh, I was wondering now that we're wrapping up, would it be okay if I, um, announce my pregnancy and like, yeah. just like have like a group hug with everybody. Um, cause this is like such a cool space, something along those lines so that it do- <laughs> like, and then everyone can be like, Oh, mazel tov. Like, 
you know, <laughs> and then just like get your hugs and then just like move on. But yeah, like there, you gotta be so gentle with that. And yeah. still, and I would also say, this is your night though. It's totally okay if that's like, if you would rather it be another time <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah right? just the minimum amount of effort to do like a check in and then ask and then like, you know, is it all right? Can I do this sort of thing? You know, mm-hmm. like, is this, is this good timing? Is this bad timing? Maybe you just tell them and then, and then like, it's, you know, separate, who knows? Yeah. So, I don't know. but mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. manners, yeah. manners, manners, Next manners. Up, David, give us article three. Next up, a huge rubber duck appeared in main Harbor, amusing the residents who are quoted as saying, it's wonderful. A giant rubber duck appeared in the harbor of Belfast, Maine in August. Uh, The 25-foot tall duck was emblazoned with the word joy. Uh, And it was in the harbor. And nobody knows who put it there, Robert. It was there. A mystery. So uh, let's see. The harbor master, Catherine Given, reported that the duck didn't pose a navigational hazard, so there was no reason to shoo it away. The uh, the harbor master said they had no idea who owns it, but it kind of fits, kind of fits the neighborhood. A lot of people want to keep it here. Then um, Judy Herman stopped to snap some photos and reported them to the Associated Press. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Judy Herman says, it's wonderful. Who would expect to see a duck in the middle of the water here? And I'll put up a photo of this, of this goofy 25 foot tall duck. To, to, okay, okay. Picture Judy, it. Are you I picturing it? <laughs> how, like Judy thought she must have found the discovery of the century, you know, to take these yeah, photos yeah. and to submit them to the local news. Like, it's like yeah, my guess is that everyone else does this too. Everyone There's else a toy duck. this. Yeah, yeah. And and I my thought would be is that there was actually for a while now. I don't know how long ago this was, but it's fairly old at this point. There was a very large rubber duck art piece. It was an art installation that had been put together by an artist, and it had been traveling around the world. And I think it was essentially done. Last I heard, it was like somewhere in I think China, like Hong Kong or Singapore or something. And that's what is like its last resting place, you know, rest yeah. in peace, Mr. Ducky. Um, that's the only one I know of. But overall, uh, I thought it might have been that, but they would have known because that artist is like famous and right. they, it would have been like set up with the city or something. Right. There would have been a formal process. So this just sounds like somebody who's like riffing off the same idea and decided to inflate random ass duck. And was it Maine? Maine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over in Belfast. <sighs> yeah, there's truly, you know, when it's that mysterious, right? Like sometimes when it's an art installation, there's like a political agenda or like a, mm-hmm. some sort of message they're trying to convey. But it just seems like an anonymous person just wanted to spark some joy in the harbor with this rubber duck. And I respect it. I respect it a lot. Did you ever see the pop up devil with a penis that was in Vancouver a couple times? Like it was taken down and then put back up and. Did you ever read about this? Yeah, it was an installation art that was put up, I think, in place of a statue that was previously there. And it was this full-blown red devil with horns, I believe maybe wings too, and had a phallus. And East Van Satan. Yeah, yeah. And it had like been taken down, I think, by the city. And then they put it up again. Somebody else. I don't know if it's a recreation or what. But Yeah, look at that. Yeah. And he sure has a penis. He sure does. <laughs> Wow. (laughs) So, okay. So it was made of mixed materials and was placed on an empty pedestal that previously displayed a Christopher Columbus statue. Yes. That's That's so weird. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you ever seen something so special? They reported it to the news. Have you ever been, you know, Judy Herman? I wish. Uh, Let's see. At most, it's like. Uh, yeah, I've never reported the news. It's usually like calling police or calling or just like interfering with like shit that happens on transit, like creepy men being creepy to women. That's mm-hmm. usually what I'll get involved with. Um, but you didn't report yeah. it yourself. You're just like contributing to an existing article or something like that. Uh, No, no, no. no. I've, I don't think I've ever been on the news or like reported something to the local news. Um, 
yeah, like an example I'm thinking of is I was on transit and a girl was clearly drunk and the guy was just like taking care of her, so to speak. Um, but just like the body, this? this is a different story, actually. Oh. Um, yeah, because I told one on the consent episode, but this was in the middle of the night on a bus. Um, and yeah, yeah, it was just it was it was gross. There was just something about her body language like she seemed like she was blacked out or like not really knowing what was going on. And I don't know if the guy said, um, you know, let's go to my place or something. Or if the girl said, I just want to go home. It was a very long time ago, but there was just something about it that seemed really uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah. So when I got off, I called the non-emergency line and like just said like, hey, on bus number, blah, blah, blah. There's a guy who just seems to be like, it seems like he's taking advantage of a very drunk woman. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, and Good they were like, for you, ah, just in case, you know, you, you never just know. Just in case. There's supposedly yeah. this universal hand signal for I need help. I just le- recently learned about this within the last oh. year or something. And it, it, it's like something to do with like thumb in and fingers down or something like that. Okay. I wonder okay. if this is like, is like been vetted with the American Sign Language <laughs> Association or something. Yeah, interesting. But um, it's meant to be used by women and other people, you know, sex trade and that to indicate like you need help without saying anything or expressing something and you're supposed to like do it behind your back or whatever. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Uh-huh. Um, can I tell you one more story? One mm. like vigilante <laughs> story? Yes. Uh, this was really recent, so it's much clearer in my mind. Mm-hmm. So this was on Burnaby Mountain and it was at like an A&W, um, you know, burger place. And there was this couple and the guy was like standing over the girl like while she was sitting down and she was very uncomfortable. And I heard the guy saying something like, you know, you always do this. Like, why don't you just come over? Like really like aggressive. Um, and I was like, oh, yikes. OK, that's a that's a tone to take in public, uh, let alone. Yeah. With this woman who's just like sitting kind of uncomfortable. They were both younger, maybe early 20s, late teens. Um, and I noticed like it was like weird. So I mentioned it to the friend I was hanging out with and we just sort of like stood by and then they the guy leaves and the girl is like by herself and just sort of like on her phone. Um, And I was like, oh, okay, well, he's gone now. I guess it's fine. Um, A little bit of time passes. The girl leaves, but then she comes back to that area and like sits on a bench and is still looking at her phone. And I like go over to talk to her. Cause I was like, I just want to check in. Uh, and I say like, you know, Hey, I don't want to be weird, but I saw like kind of an awkward interaction between you and that guy. Mm-hmm. And she like, didn't even let me finish. She was just like, yeah, he was being so rude. And he took my bag. And I was like, he took your bag. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I like my wallet is in there. My keys are in there. He just like wanted me to come over. And I said no. And he took my bag. So I'm telling him to give it back to me so I can go home. I'm like, Oh my God, that's like, that's Beth. awful. Are you okay? <laughs> um, and she's like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just like trying to get him to come back. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm David. This is my friend, Michael. We're just gonna, you know, we're over here if you need anything. Another couple minutes pass. The guy comes back and they're like talking and I'm not kidding. The guy's just like, da, 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 da. like, just come over. Come on, please. Come on. Like this whole thing. And the girl, all she's saying is just give me my bag. Just give me my bag please give me my bag. Like not even engaging with what he was saying anymore. Like the guy's just standing there with her backpack. And so it keeps going. And, you know, I just sort of like lean around the corner, get like a good look at the both of them. I'm like, hey man, you should probably just give her the bag and call it a night. And the guy, he goes, hey, this is my girlfriend. We're just trying to like solve a problem right now. And I'm like, well, stealing her bag and, uh, you know, kind of holding it in front of her is probably not the best way to fix the problem, whatever it is. Maybe you should talk about it in the morning and let her go home. And while I was saying that, the girl is just like, thank you. And just like runs away. <laughs> and then the guy and I, we just like make eye contact for like a minute. And he's just like, you know, clearly frustrated. But like, you know, he got caught red handed. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so. uh yeah. So then I broke eye contact and I was just like, all right. <laughs> and then I leave with my friend. Oh my friend. gosh. Good for you. Um, Way to stand up so that was a thrill. 
Wow, that's yeah. That, that sounds like he's really good at problem solving by you know doing petty things like stealing a bag and 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 stealing a somebody. bag. Right. Stealing a bag to coerce a woman to come over to your place. Are you shitting me, man? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. The, hopefully that taught him a lesson that encounter. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. At the very least, that um, that he shouldn't steal bags. You know, <laughs> if he's <laughs> still one. misogynistic, no steal it is bags. what it is. But <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well. Uh those those were insightful articles on the news and what's going out there in the bizarre world of news some of it uplifting some of it confusing some of it downright disturbing <laughs> <laughs> i know i brought some news of my own <laughs> right yeah but you know what it's it's all out there it's a mixed bag i'm just glad there's some joyous ducks out there in the water to counterbalance exactly. all the bag stealing weirdness exactly pointless what do you call random acts of joy random acts of kindness they go a long way mm-hmm Speaking of which, we're going to go into a little bit of the joy of the show. Uh, And we're going to present to you a couple little pieces of news. First and foremost, this Justin, where we're going to be presenting articles where the other person does not know the article. So Dave and I each picked an article for the other. We have no knowledge of it, don't know anything about it. We're going to have to create a uh, news report based off it also using our fellow co-host. And then we're going to go to a second game called Intimate Report, and I'm going to give you a little bit more detail on that once we reach it. Mm. But first up, David, pull open your article, because this news is just in. This just in. Sound of music. Swiss cows were airlifted off mountain pastures ahead of an annual parade. That is the headline. I am now making up the rest of this. So, way up in... Already forgetting where the location was, Swiss, Switzerland, way up in Switzerland, (laughs) millions of cows, not millions, dozens of cows were being airlifted via helicopter to a secondary location. They were changing farms and they, the, the grass was greener on the other side of the mountain. Am I in the ballpark, Robert? (laughs) You are way off. Damn it! Let me <laughs> let me expand upon this. Uh, the uh, the cows, which were in Switzerland, it's, as as you know, in a Swiss, um, <laughs> they were taken off the ridges in the Clausen Pass region in the center of the country okay. using mesh harnesses. The creatures were suspended by a length of cable before the chopper took them to the skies. Uh, waiting farmers used guide ropes to help the cows land safely before moving them into more conventional trailers. Meanwhile, the more fit and able livestock were able to make the, uh, their way down the mountainside by hoof. Okay. Uh, farmer Jonas Ardell said one reason for the helicopter transport is that you can't reach some pastures by I car. I like that you're slipping into kind of a Swiss mm-hmm. like Nordic oh. accent as you read. <laughs> and the other is that some cows are injured so they don't have to walk all the way down. He also added, I didn't ask a cow how it feels after such a flight as it couldn't answer, but it's only a short distance and it has to keep going. It was only a short, calm flight. I didn't notice any difference between the ones that flew and the ones that walked normally. <laughs> In total, the herd number was around a thousand. So you're off about the dozen. Damn only it. One percent of the group were given the help of getting down. What's one percent of a thousand? Ten? A hundred. Ten. Stop it. I don't it's know. I'm bad with math. I am horrible <laughs> at math. <laughs> so ten. So you weren't that far off. Yeah. Then it's a, it just short of a dozen. Cool. Okay. I'll take it. All right. I was close. I'll give myself a fifty percent accuracy on that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. How about you, Robert? How how close can you get just by reading a headline? <laughs> Let's find out. Because you know what, Internet? This just in. Washington man in yellow dress steals school bus, rams front end loader into a strange wife's home, says the deputies. Okay, now close it. Okay, now what happened? <laughs> this is what happened. A man who had just been released from an asylum returned to his previous abode where his wife still was, dressed in her previous clothing while she was not home, donned her wares, 
picked up a nearby trailer and rammed it into the house out of complete frustration and insanity. The man's name was Todd McDurlis, and he was wearing a size six dress with florals on a yellow base. Todd was quickly arrested shortly after this event, and his wife had to chase him out of the room on his front loader with a rolling pin that he had an intense fear of and was the very tool that placed him in that insane asylum to begin with. How close am I? Oh, you're pretty close. So yes. there are there are some details that are worth mentioning. Um, so the name... Oh, where did I... I lost the article. Sorry. Um, eh. So the name of the man was Andrew Luden. Um, so unfortunately, what did you say? Arnold <laughs> Do you remember? McDurlish. <laughs> <laughs> McDurlish. Uh, so, okay. So before he got the front end loader, he also got a school bus. So, oh, right. so he drove that. that school bus and then changed vehicles into a front end loader you know like a big like bulldozer type thing um because i didn't know what that was just based on the title uh so there's that aspect then there's also this weird aspect where people had known that it was a stolen school bus it was like off of a route it was not registered or whatever but the police didn't arrest him they didn't pursue they basically said like okay well we know this is stolen but this isn't a felony so we don't want to arrest him. <laughs> so there, there's like that weird angle. That's why he got so far in mm. an allegedly stolen school bus, um, according to this article. And then I also want to mention how this article is from Fox News. Now, so when I first read the article, I was like, oh, teehee man in a dress, right? Like, I think we're kind of culturally trained to find that odd or funny or mm. whatever and then i like second guess myself i was like oh shit wait wait on fox news a very conservative show this is a bit of propaganda do you see where i'm going right now robert how so i think that this is a bit of a transphobic like article like oh. to even just mention this like okay sure it's an oddity right but i think this the subtext of this message is, you know, people in dresses are crazy. Men in dresses are crazy, which I think mm. is is a bit of a hit piece. Uh, so fuck you, Fox News. <laughs> Sorry to bring it down, but yeah, that's yeah. that's something I thought about. And I wanted to uh, bring that up related to that article. I, I would think that they're using it for sensationalism because it's one well, thing yeah. to say, like, a man steals a school bus and rams a house, but it's like man in yellow dress steals school bus. It's almost like if he had a big hat on or he had like, I don't know, five puppies with him. <laughs> it's just, they want to put more sensationalism, like it's clickbait. Um, and there's yeah. actually a picture of a flipped car in the house. I don't know how he pulled that off. I guess he flipped it using the front end loader. <laughs> yeah, did he flip a car into using the front house? Front loader. Yeah, these pictures are insane. Yeah. yeah, truly just like destroyed this house. Um, he also, I wasn't, yeah. I can see now, authority said Loudon had been released Saturday morning from Western State Hospital, a psychiatric facility. So I wasn't entirely off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I, I couldn't he remember if that detail was correct. He did leave a psychiatric facility, but he didn't brandish a rolling pin, which disappoints me. Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, oof, trigger warning just for, like, some violent comments. But, like, you know, this is foxnews.com. Like, what do we expect? One of the comments is, gee, she's definitely confused about his gender. Where's the social workers? With 157 likes on that comment. The next comment is no confusion, just a run of the mill Democrat. And then this this one's nasty. I'm actually not going to read it. Uh, there's no point. Um, yeah. So they're, they're ooh, Fox News. Ooh, Fox News is so yeah. gross. Oh, and, those are the, and those are the viewers of Fox News, obviously, if they're making comments yeah. like that, which means nothing. I also noticed it looks like this happened in Washington. Yep. Washington State. And he stole yeah, there the were some comments bus. about how liberal Washington is. <laughs> yeah, he stole the bus from Leavenworth, which is the like German town where they have like 
German buildings and German Christmas festivals every year. I know Leavenworth. Oh. I've been there. Oh, mm. well, Leavenworth. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had something funnier to say about this article, but like, yeah, I don't know. It's just a roller coaster of an article. I, these are the kind of things like they should have interviewed uh, the wife. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I can't even begin to imagine what she would have said about all this. Right. Because like, uh, I just I feel bad for all of them. I'm like, ah, oh, this lady like now has to deal with this house that was ruined. This man is like, you know, clearly disturbed and like very upset about the situation. But that was not. That, that was not a path to healing that he yeah. chose. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And it looks know. like there's actually a, like, local law that says they will not pursue uh, cars in, if like, in a chase unless there's right. probable cause that a serious felony occurred. So, that's I guess they, yeah. that's why they weren't, like, he might have stolen it, but they were not pursuing him. Yeah, because they weren't sure it was a felony. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well... <laughs> that is it for the unknown news. Now we're going to dive into even more unknowns with an intimate twist. You ready for this, mm-hmm. Internet? We have a nice little piece called The Intimate Report. These are articles that are going to be based off a randomly generated image, and each of us is going to have an opportunity to um, act as though we have a full and thorough knowledge on what that piece was about, and we're going to expand upon it, utilizing each other, Uh, if we choose to expand upon that uh, intimate report, similar to the ones that happened in the days of yore where reporters and notable anchors would cover a piece that was of particular interest to them. Ready for some intimate reports, David? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I have a story. Um, I'm just going to... I'll show you the picture right now. All right. In tonight's story... We take a deep dive into the nature of self-portraiture. Local artist Alice Wonderland uh, was working on her local uh, was working in her photography studio and was experimenting with various representations of self. Alice is a very curious person, a very deep person, and she wanted to really look at objectification in this series of self-portraits. So, as a news anchor, I also experience similar themes to what Alice was looking at, you see, because I am not just an image on your screen. I am a flesh and blood human being, but I am incentivized into be more of an object like Alice. We're going to interview Alice now in her studio. She uh, prefers things to be very quiet, very intimate. So we're going to keep things at a whisper as we uh, ask her a bit about this work. Cutting to that now. So, um, Alice, uh, this piece of these, these two pieces that you've submitted for this feature specifically are, are very interesting. So what are each of them called? Um, my first image is called hands and my second image is called Face. Interesting. Oh, those are wonderful titles. Okay, I have to ask, are the hands in image one, are they, are they your hands? Both because there's four hands there. They're all my hands. I, I wanted to, I wanted people to know that we don't touch ourselves enough. Uh-huh. I feel this imagery represents the lack of intimacy and insight that we have on ourselves. So I recreated my hand in multiple positions on my face and head. I, I apologize if this is a rude question, but I'm seeing now that you actually have four hands. Yes, on your body. I do. I, in fact, have six. I have two okay. that are often stored um, behind my back, clenched in the form of prayer, because I'm always praying for more hands. I see. Were you born with six 
hands? No, I was born with two, but I felt like I was at a disadvantage when I looked upon the natural world and saw the number of creatures that seemed to have a more intimate relationship with themselves had more hands. So I had a set of four more hands robotically <laughs> attached to my body. I'm sorry. There's like, oh, there's a lot of spider webs on your ceiling. Do you, oh. do you keep them? Yeah. Like that? I, I found that when I started with the additions of the hands, I thought, why not go all the way? I also added spinnerets to my bottom so that I have the capacity to produce silk and the ability to climb walls. So I just started creating alternative forms of art, not just photography, but also silk art. That's amazing. I think that leads us into this next piece. So, uh, oh, yes, sorry, this... let me just clear a little bit of this silk off you. That's one of my oh, art pieces you. you walked through. Thank you. I oh yeah. oh no. Okay. Does is that okay? Do you incorporate oh, yeah, no, the damage? You, you just okay. added to it. I I feel my art is participatory, okay. and um, you have just added to one of my butt silk pieces. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, so uh, this featured piece number mm. two, what is this one called? Yeah. You said face. Mm, face. Is face. so. Is that? Is there emphasis? On, <laughs> is there emphasis on the C mm. there? Um, there. Uh, yeah. There's a capital C in the title because I wanted people to see their face. Do you know what I mean? I wanted oh. to play on the words. And let people know that your face isn't just what you're looking at. It's what's looking back at you, be it your front or your back. We have okay, face. I have to ask. Yeah. I have to ask. In this portrait, mm -hmm. we don't see your other two pairs of hands behind your back. So was this taken before they sprouted? This was, yeah, prior to the surgery. Um, but they're detachable anyways. I can take them off See. Do you oh. want to hold one? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, do you do you also want to handle my butt silk? That's that's a bit intimate, Alice. I think. I but don't this know. is what we'll my art is feature. all about. I mean, we see your butt in this particular picture. Mm -hmm. Was there significance to that? Yeah, I wanted people to see the source of my journey and the beginning of it, of my transformation. That so was... the journey started at your butt. Yes. Um, Prior to that hands being attached, I knew that I was going to have the six appendages, so I thought I'd start with the butt implant. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm struggling to move my feet right now. Yeah, that's because of the poison. It's uh, probably starting uh, to set in. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you touched my hand, you probably contracted the poison. I just got uh, it as an add-on feature. Um, okay, I'm getting a little, getting a little bit lightheaded. Ca camera operator, just, do you think you could just take the footage? He's out? already cocooned uh, up. Uh, camera, camera operator. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, spooky. <laughs> Welcome to Halloween. It's October. Well, soon to be. Oh yeah, this could be a. This is yeah. This is in time for Halloween. Get me. It's get me. All right, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the end of that intimate report. I'm gonna start us off in three, two, one, and welcome back here on an intimate eye with Robert Mackay. Tonight we cover a very interesting and naturally intimate topic. And that is the topic of exchange. That is the topic of currency. That is the topic of capitalism. And that is the topic of giving and receiving. For tonight, we're covering a piece on e-commerce. That's right. I wanted to deep dive on the various ways in which we are spending money in this day and age compared to the past. I have a very personal relationship with the subject matter as prior to becoming a news anchor, I was a exclusive eBay purchaser and seller. I sold items on eBay. I bought things on eBay. I shipped things using eBay. 
to the extent that I actually bankrupt myself, I had my husband leave me and my family disown me. I went through years of rehabilitation and also had to go on a pilgrimage to a mountain where I had to learn the act and art of minimalism. And so I bring to you e-commerce in this day and age. What I found in this intimate report was a very interesting exchange on how e-commerce actually happens. What happens after you click that button, that buy now, that one click buy, that click and collect? And so I decided to speak with one of the foremost inventors of e-commerce. We're talking to Heimlich Distenmeyer, who actually created the very first e-commerce experience. We're going back to the 1990s, to the days of GeoCities and Angel Fire, where the origins of online commerce occurred. Heimlich, thank you for joining us. Of course, happy to be here. Heimlich, you are one of the first, one of the most influential people for creating a generation of capitalism online. How does that feel? It feels wonderful, you know. I wish I got a bit more of a hefty cut, though. Yes, yes. I heard that your technologies, your coding, were eventually sold and resold by multiple corporations throughout the world. But you had originally created this form of e-commerce to sell some personal items from your hometown. What were those? Weed. Weed. Are we talking about the uh, actual plant that might grow on desired in a garden or the more street reference to marijuana marijuana i sold cannabis you see back in 1971 at the stanford artificial intelligence laboratory and the massachusetts institute of technology i was the leader of the first e-commerce sale you can read more about it in john markoff's book what the dormouse said Astounding. I never thought that that book had anything to do with that. But lo and behold, you have influenced literature and online exchange. What was the price of the first item you sold? Five dollars. Five dollars in the 1990s. That is... In the 70s. Were you even listening to Heimlich's story? I was referring to the proliferation of your technology, but the very first one was indeed in the 70s. Mm. I know you were a very sensitive man, that you sold more than just your weed. Eventually, it got into other aspects of your life. What else did you sell? Yes. Well, my colleague Michael Aldrich made one of the first online shopping systems in 1979. Then France took the lead in 1982 with Minitel. Then Karen Bean took the lead in 1983. After that, we had Gateshead. Then Netscape in 94. Then Amazon in 95. Boo, Amazon! Bezos changed the landscape and not for the better, in my opinion. Bezos! Heimlich, we heard that you have had actual personal encounters with Bezos. You were um, cited in one piece of footage from CCTV of you running onto his property, uh, obviously inebriated in the evening, shouting at his window and throwing weed and Geos AOL discs for the internet at his home. It was not one of my prouder moments, but Mm. a message needed to be sent to Bezos. And frankly, people keep sending him the same message. They keep saying, Bezos, you crazy. You're going to ruin the world. You're going to fuck off to space. And what, what, what what is the point of any of this? And he does not care. He does not listen. Hmm. And you can, I can tell you're a very passionate person about this. And I too had my struggles with overconsumption of online ordering. What is your vision? What is your hope of what e-commerce would have become? Ideally, e-commerce was supposed to decentralize the economy and mitigate the concentrations of wealth that were happening at the uh, the, the bank levels as well as at the uh, energy company levels. But all that happened was 
more power went to the banks because the mm. banks enforced the credit system and the credit system only became more powerful with the aid of electronics. So, you know, looking back, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. But I really, you know, it. I just wish we could all just smoke some weed and relax. I completely agree. Thank you so much for joining us. There is so much Thank more you. to explore about this. Heimlich, if there is one thing you would like to see the world take into the next generation of e-commerce, what would that be? <sighs> Kill Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, you heard the man. Get your knives and get a stabbing. This has been Robert Mackay for An Intimate Eye. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. That wow. was a joke. That was not an actual call to action against <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Womp, womp. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> uh, that brings us to the end of today's show. David, oh. what were some takeaways for you in all this? In all of this, you know, it's good to, uh, uh, I think I think what I said before, just random acts of kindness, random acts of joy or inspiration go a long way. So mm. uh, do yourself a favor. Just look up some heartwarming articles. Take a break from the daily news grind. How about you, Robert? Um, it would be that, like, there is definitely power persuasion and sway that um, the media holds in the way in which they produce an article and the way they write it. Uh, and if it's not the reporter who's writing it, then the rest of the internet will rewrite it and they'll give their own spin on it. And it's scary how easy you can take one initial article and spin it out to 30 different variations, take one segment of it, you know, whatever kind of contributes to your story that you want to tell. Uh, like quoting can be really abused. Mm. Mm. Interesting thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, thank you for listening to Tissues of the Day. We upload every Friday. Are we still keeping on that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Starting, uh, let's see, starting September 24th. Yeah, we're going to be weekly on Fridays. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and even if we're not, we always have content coming out. We're always recording these, mm -hmm. and we have a wonderful backlog of content coming at you out there on the internet. So don't sit idly by. Make sure you subscribe to BitButton on YouTube. Don't miss any content. Hit that bell so you get a ring a ding a ling a ling a ling reminder of any updates. And if you want, follow David at BitButton on Instagram, YouTube, uh, but just not on Twitter. He's completely abandoned Twitter. He hates birds. Twitter's Meanwhile, so lame. So lame. Myself, Robert, you can find me on Instagram at Robert F. Mackay. Uh, and my pro profile's not private anymore because I decided, well, I should probably open it up if I'm going to ask people to join me. So it's oh, much yeah, easier yeah. to find me on Instagram now. So, In the show notes, Robert made a joke about revealing his naughty bits by becoming unprivate. I thought yeah. he was going there. It's but my he was only not. fans on Instagram. <laughs> I just put like a small little black bar over all the naughty bits. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see the full no, picture. No, Robert, it would have to be a large black bar. We know. Oh, <laughs> Just go to my OS if you want to see how big it is. <laughs> Your OS? Uh, Your OF? My OS. OS. Only fans. My OS. OS, my operating system. Just go on over to my operating system to take a look at my giant weenie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> There's so much to load and unload. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go get those gigabytes figure us out and if you want to support our show like people like Vicky and Elias patreon.com slash bit button or just leave a nice review on any of our podcast platforms um, and remember out there stay wet internet breaking water uh, I wanted to try to make a pun about breaking news and breaking water that's what I was going for. I feel like you should have just made the sound as opposed to say the thing. <laughs> Breaking water. Breaking water. It's like, it's like that sketch we did where it's just like I just vocalized all the things instead of doing them. Like I didn't do my own foley. I just made sounds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out the Eating Out 2 review um, for yeah, <laughs> just saying the words of your sound effects. Yeah. Sound effect of water breaking. 
Dramatic music cue. <laughs> zap, 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 zap. <laughs>